Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, today we're going to talk about an article that came out about five-year estimate for home prices. Right. Now, before we get started, we are like literally this close. We're about 100 subscribers away from 10,000. Nice. So we need you to subscribe. Get us to 10,000. We'd be very happy. Um, we're going to talk about this video, uh, about this article, and then we're going to go through the numbers. Now, we're not endorsing these numbers. These are not our numbers. No. But we're going to point them at, we're going to, there's something in here that when you see it, you maybe have an aha moment. All right. Okay. All right. Juan, let's first start with this. We, a year ago or two years ago, when, um, we were seeing home price estimates that were like in the 18 to 19% and they actually ended up being like 12%, right? 2022. Okay. Home price appreciation. Okay. Right. And then we got to 2023 and everyone was pred predicting home prices would tank, right? right? It was nine, down 20 to like down 5%. Right. Like everyone was predicting home prices. Home prices are up 6% um, in 2023. Actually, we did a video about this. This is actually, this is beat every year from 2015 to 2019. Mm -hmm. Home price appreciation, right? right? So all these estimates are basically BS, right? They are. So, um, with in, in that in that spirit this is for entertainment purposes only but it's kind of, kind of a fun exercise to kind of see where you think home prices will be where maybe todd thinks home prices will be and of course where they will actually be because i'm the one who knows you know okay <laughs> one is holding on to that information that's probably why she's so hot on buying more rentals she sent me a rental today so we should buy this um okay, okay. look there are people who want to buy um things that are less um, that appreciate less. Cybertruck. Okay, now I want to buy Cybertruck. Oh, you want to buy Cybertruck? Uh, that so that no, don't don't go there. Okay. Um, so you know if you if you love our videos, then please feel free to contribute to my Cybertruck fund. I will not be offended. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so there are people who like to buy you know maybe clothes or other things. I like to buy houses. Yeah. And I would like a Cybertruck. Okay. Um, you could drive your Cybertruck to the houses. Yes. Okay. All right. So this is the, now they got this data here comes from a thing called the home price expectation survey. They literally crowdsourced this number. They mm -hmm. asked a bunch of experts, industry experts, um, economists, people like that based on data and they grabbed all the information. They basically, I don't know if they picked the middle number or they averaged them or what, but this is what they got. Okay. Now this was December, December, they started in 2023, third quarter. They did the 2023 estimates, 24, 5, 6, 7. Now, these are the numbers per, per year. 3.32, 2.17, 3.24, 3.79, 4.181. These are actually lower than historic home price appreciations, right? Right. These are very conservative numbers. Extremely conservative. Now, so, I mean, these, I don't even know that... I, it's hard to even imagine these really keeping up with inflation. They barely be right now. Inflation's at three percent. So literally, they're saying almost for the next four years we're just gonna beat inflation. We're just gonna barely beat it by a little. Right, and I'm less than convinced about that. You think we're gonna beat these numbers by more? Yeah. Okay. And I'm not look. I'm not one of these people that thinks that home prices are gonna go up twenty percent next year. Uh, but they're out there. They're out there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is, you know, even more conservative than, than, than I am. Interest rates have gone, interest rates today at one point dip below seven. Uh, and the, there was, I got an email from a lender that he could do a million dollar loan for 6.375 or something. It's like six and three eighths on a, but it had to be a million dollar, at least a million dollar. I've loan seen him at five and change. Maybe that was for a 15 or something else. Oh, I, I don't remember, but I've, I've, seen them, I've seen the million dollar ones for five and change. Okay. This is why we're showing you this, okay? The, these numbers probably do not seem super significant to you, right? But now let's show you this. This is, if in 2023, you had that 3.32% appreciation, that house would be worth 413 the next year. Mm -hmm. Then you had the next year appreciation and it, the... In 2025, they'd be worth 422. Mm -hmm. Then 435, 452, and 471. So your asset, 
the house you bought mm -hmm. in five years is worth seventy one thousand three hundred sixty three bucks more. Okay, so what I want to point out is that it would it's going to be worth you know using this this logic. It's going to be worth about seventy thousand dollars more in five years, but that appreciation is on you know your twenty percent maybe that you put down that four hundred thousand dollar house. So that means that you took eighty thousand dollars and you turned it into $150,000 in five years. That's pretty good. Yeah, so people always, just remember this, that your your appreciation is not based on the value of the house because you're borrowing that money, you're leveraging it. Mm -hmm. Like Juan has said, it's if, if you get a VA loan, zero down, and you don't put any money down, in five years you get to walk away with 71 grand, um, we're just pointing out that is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. I think these numbers are pretty, I would be shocked honestly if we, don't get conflate inflation under control. If by 2028, I would be shocked if a $400,000 house today is only worth 471. But here's the other thing. I keep hearing this excuse of people who are renters. I, I just need prices to drop. When home prices fall 30 or 40% and mortgage rates go down to three or 4% again, then I'll buy. Like unless my rental, unless my home payment can be less than my rental payment, I'm not gonna buy. What, what, how do you respond to that one? So that's like saying that when I get younger, I'll do whatever. Okay. It's not happening. You're guys. not gonna get younger. I'm not getting younger. Okay. There's a myth that if the, if the renter, if the rent payment is more on a monthly basis, it's, it's better to, or it's less, it's better to rent. Because one, a couple of things that aren't included in this one, let's say you do buy that house for 400,000. This 71,363 is only the price. You actually have more equity because you've been paying down the loan. Right. But so, you know, what I was focused on is, is on, on the investment end, right? You invested $80,000. Now you've got $150,000 five years later. That's really what I was focused on. Because remember, your appreciation is on the total price of the house, not just on what you put down. So, you know, let's say, for example, that you only put... 10% down. So that $40,000 now is $150,000 five years later. That's a great return on investment. So those are kind of, the, that's the way I look at it. Now, you might have a different perspective and that's great, but that's that's how my brain works. Here's another thing to think about. You buy it, you rent a house when you could have bought a house for $400,000 because the rent was only $2,000 a month and your mortgage would have been $2,600, $2,700 a month. Mm -hmm. Well, just remember that if you decide in a couple of years, you're paying, you, the house is going to be more so that you're never going to pay that 400000 again. You're always going to pay more for it. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too is that rental payment, whatever you're paying, is going to go up next year. And mm -hmm. it's going to go up the next year. Right. And then the people who bought the house at 400000 that you probably said, oh, I'm not going to do that. It's a bad idea. They can always refi when rates drop. Mm -hmm. So let's say two or three years later, rates drop down below 5% and you're like, okay, now I'm going to buy and the home, the, that same house is 435. Well, the person who's owned it for three years is refis it, but they're refining a much smaller amount because they bought the house at a lower amount. Right. So they're they're actually way ahead on this appreciation compared to someone who waits three years to buy a house. Right. And then when you're renting, remember, I mean, if you've been renting for any length of time, you know that rents go up um, every time, you know, every year when you renew your rental agreement. So. When was the last time that your rent went up less than 5%? Yeah, not very often. So even at 5% rent increases, that's still more than what this is telling you. I mean, your home is, your home is appreciating and your rent, your rent is going up. So being in control of your housing costs is really important. It's one of the most basic things, right? Because like I say, we all need to live somewhere. So having control of that housing cost is super important. So when you get a fixed rate mortgage, which is what is very popular here in the U.S., that really locks in your, your housing costs. And, you know, you're very fortunate because here in the U.S., we do have, by and large, almost all the loans are fixed rate loans. That's not the case in other places in the world. In other places in the world, uh, they do have uh, predominantly variable rate mortgages, which is why when rates go up, uh, people get, get in trouble in, in other places. So we're very fortunate to have fixed rate uh, loans here so if you have the opportunity and if it makes sense for your situation then buying a home might be good for you what are some macro forces that have been pushing home prices up we'll use vegas as an example mm -hmm. 
why are, is it highly likely home, homes will be more expensive in five years than today? So a couple of reasons. So in Vegas, we have a, a lot of people moving in. And so we don't have sufficient housing for everybody, which means okay. supply and demand, right? So the more people want to buy a house, the less houses we have to sell. We've got a supply and demand issue. So that means that home prices will generally increase in value. Uh, the other thing that happens in Vegas, and it happens in a lot of metropolitan areas, uh, we are constrained by space, right? We simply, even though we look all around us and you see the desert, that's not for us to use. That belongs to the federal government. And the federal government is very um, slow to release land uh, for us to build on. So because there is scarcity of land, again, that also pushes home prices up. Uh, we have we have scarce labor. We have scarce um uh, building materials and all of this and of course that pushes prices up too so it's not necessarily you're getting more value although you are with time getting more value as homes get more energy efficient as homes have more features um, so for example there are builders who are putting solar on homes and they come with solar so that's already built into that cost which is really nice because that means that you get to finance it at a better rate because you're financing financing that in the price of the house rather than separately um, so all kinds of cool things, but all of that pushes home prices up, right? So that all of that kind of speaks to why home prices will continue to increase. We have a bunch of rentals, I think, that are around the $400,000 range. I fully expect that they'd be worth over 500000 by 2028. Woohoo. I mean, some of them, you know, I think that's not unreasonable. I like the way you think. And then the other thing, too, is... I fully expect rents will be higher than they are today in five years. Uh, I raise rents every year. Every year. Okay. And that's not punishing renters. That's just economics. It's just it is economics. supply and demand and market forces. Well, it's a lot of things. It is economics. It's supply and demand. Is that my property taxes go up every year. My um, hazard insurance goes up every year. Okay. Um, my property gets older every year, which means that it's more likely that it will it will need repairs. Okay. My appliances get older every year, which means that it's more likely that they will need to be replaced, and all of that needs to be factored in so that I'm not r running at a negative cash flow over the long term. Perfect. That's it. That was it. Okay. Did you have fun? Did we entertain you? Did you like Todd's charts? Charts. I love. I didn't Todd's make charts. them though. No, that's I okay. Borrowed them. He borrows them. <laughs> so remember to like the video, subscribe. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell, share the video, leave us notes. Um, we love reading your notes. Your real estate related comments keep us awake at night and entertained, or at least him. Yeah. Uh, I read them. So, so we hope you had fun, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.